We're looking here at baby bees making their first entry into the garden in the spring. They're coming out of the hive and taking a look after a long hibernation period uh, where they were busy in the hive but couldn't come out. So a bit like each of us, as we are ordered to stay in place individually to protect ourselves collectively. Similar, always life seems to be similar to the bees. Life has changed a lot for us in the past weeks and we're anticipating changes every day if we're watching the news. In that time, I think it's helpful to look at those things that don't change and won't change. We are each human beings with an eternal mark, an eternal destination. So we're built, created, not just for this life, but for the next. Hospice workers will tell us that when people approach death, they care not about the details or the physical elements of their life, but about the relationships and the service that they did or didn't do. They might say, I'm glad I took good care of my children, or I wish I had spent more time at home. Nobody says, I wish I had worked more according to the hospice care workers. It's important to note that. And one thinks about Jesus Christ as he approached death. He, he had to ensure that his humanity remained lined up with the Father's will and the Father's needs. Not his human needs, the Father's needs, not his human desires or comfort. And in the garden, his dread and his revulsion was such that we know he actually sweated drops of blood. And it's as though Christ held himself still in prayer until all of the revulsion, all of the temptation had left him, literally kind of excreted through his body. And his human will, his human decision then, was lined up with the Father's will. Many of us are being asked to do things we don't want to do right now or wish we didn't have to. I think this is good for us. I do think that in some ways the spell of modern life, with all of its distractions and details, has been broken. And maybe we're a little uncomfortable because we have to confront ourselves as we remain more still. God bless you, lay apostles. God bless all our healthcare workers and our first responders. Everyone who looks so tired as they give us the latest reports. And let's each contemplate now what it is we feel revulsion about. But what do we have to hold our humanity in place for God? Where do we have to do that as Jesus did?